This is Bob Carlson and I am making this video today because I have successfully created my first uh, Android application and have uh, moved it uh, from my Windows PC by USB stick to my Pine 64. I uh, did an installation and ran the app. Um, when I first saw the Pine 64 on the Kickstarter, uh, that was my intention uh, to actually do that. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, it's been a bit of a challenge. I've made a couple of large blunders along the way, but I thought I would uh, make this video so that uh, maybe it'll save you some time if this is what you would like to do with your Pine 64. Um, I've done a couple of other videos prior to this. Um, how to put the play box together, if you've got that option, and how to load a couple of uh, the different operating systems. Uh, if you'd like to see those, just Google Pine64 and my name, they should come right up. Um, for right now, I will uh, turn the camera onto my screen and we'll take a look at what I did. I have never been much one for video games. My game of choice has always been uh, software installation and troubleshooting. I find it a lot more challenging, a lot more interesting, and it pays better. So, uh, the first thing I discovered about installing Android Studio is there is as many ways to do it as there are operating systems. So the best thing to do is Google how to install it and then find uh, some instructions that actually match your operating system. Uh, I'm using Windows 10 um, and I originally installed uh, version 1 of Android Studio and I had some success with that um, once I figured out that I needed uh, additional parts which I'll tell you in a minute. Um, prior to that I had uh, nothing but errors and frustration for about uh, two days but once I realized I was missing some uh, significant components and which I found on a Google search uh, I went back and installed them. Um, my second challenge was to install the latest version, version 2, and uh, wound up with um, older parts that uh, confused it. And that uh, took me another day to resolve. So uh, basically, you need Java. You need to start with Java. Um, uh, the latest version is Java 8, which what Android uh, version 2 needs. So download that, install it, and make sure you know where you put it, because that'll be important later. Uh, you can get that right off of uh, the oracle.com, and I'll, I'll put a link up for you. Um, once that's installed, uh, you just need to go over to Android Studio, and you'll see that there is a download right there for Android Studio 2.1 but it doesn't really tell you right up front that you need the SDK files, uh, which you will find down here. So uh, if you install uh, the SDK files for your um, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you have, first, I found that works a little bit better. Uh, then and download the Android Studio. And again, uh, make sure you know where your SDK files are and your Java files are. Try to put them someplace that uh, um, is convenient and that you'll remember. And then when you download Android Studio and point them to those files, it'll fire right up. Uh, if you don't, you'll be chasing errors for quite some time. And if you try to mix and match the Javas and the Androids and the SDKs, uh, you will not have a good day. So. Uh, my tip is uh, do your research first, get all your parts together, and then uh, install them in the right order. Uh, and there's plenty of videos on how to do that, but this is just my heads up uh, and what it took uh, for me to have a frustrating day, but hopefully uh, you'll sail right through it. And then let me transfer to my other screen and I will show you what uh, Android Studio looks like. All right, this is your basic Android Studio screen. Um, when I was a programmer back in the early 80s, like 1980, 
Uh, it was basic and COBOL, nothing like this. Um, I made a career out of COBOL programming for many years, but the last time I was a professional programmer was 1993. So, uh, if you're looking at this and uh, a little bit confused, um, this is exactly how I felt uh, about two days ago. Um, it's a whole different world for me, even though I do have some experience. Um, if you look closely, I'm not even sure that you could see this on this screen, but I'm basically doing a, uh, a button. I'm doing two buttons. One button will be green and one button will be blue. And I really can't tell from that screen there what it's going to do. Uh, if I go over to the activity screen, um, I can get a basic idea of what's going to happen here. Um, I've written a title that says Hello World. I put that on the top of my page. I wrote another little line that says this will be my first app where I change the background color. Okay, that showed up there. It's my text view right here. See, Hello World text. Easy enough. There is a lot of other things that go with it and all of these have to be uh, coded in, but the Android Studio has a lot of this uh, preloaded, so you just start to type and it will finish for you. Sort of. <laughs> okay, I've added one button here, a second button here, and basically uh, it's going to tell the buttons to do something. Now, if I go click on my uh, active screen, this gets built as I'm coding. Um, doesn't do anything. It shows me in the, where in the code I'm at, but it doesn't actually do any work, okay? Um, part of the download of the Android Studio and part of the uh, SDK files that you need lets you build your own device, whether it be a phone or a tablet. It'll create a virtual device. Now, I am using a 7-inch screen on my Playbox, so I will activate my 7-inch Nexus screen here that came with the it's a it's an emulator that came with the studio and now it's going to start a whole bunch of uh, additional code it's going to pop up my emulator phone and that takes a few seconds I'd like to point out that uh, Android, Android Studio uh, takes a lot of resources. So if your computer does not have, uh, say, eight gigs of RAM, uh, you may want to think about getting a bigger computer because this takes up a lot of horsepower. Um, but I only have a, a small computer here, and it's doing quite fine, but I do have eight gigs of RAM. Okay, right now I see that I have a basic phone, but my app is not running yet. It's right now building that app and will, in a moment or two, uh, execute that application for me on my emulated phone. Okay, this is what uh, my application will look like on whatever device I put it on, whether it be a phone or my Pine 64. Uh, if I click the green button, my background goes green. If I click the blue button, my background goes blue. Now, if you think I just uh, came up with this on my own, I did not. Uh, what I did was uh, put my Pine 64 on cast screen and cast uh, about 36 tutorials to my television uh, for which I watched until about midnight because prior to that I was getting nowhere um, with these applications. Uh, I am accustomed to just typing um, straight up text, uh, cutting and pasting, and that does not work. When you type these commands, uh, each one of them is an Android uh, command, and you'll see that when you, when you actually try to write your own. Um, 
I do not know if I'll be able to write uh, my very own application, the, what, I, what I'm hoping to do, but I'm hoping to find enough tutorials that I will get close enough and then be able to add my own code. Um, but definitely uh, take advantage of, of as much as the internet as you can. Um, this is a, a steep learning curve uh, application builder, but uh, you know once once I saw uh, how these were getting made and why I needed all of these lines to do a simple uh, text, to do a simple button, why would I need all of these things? Um, it made it pretty clear. And I actually typed this one uh, from memory uh, after doing this first one. I didn't have to go look at the tutorial which was running on my other screen. So I, I, just, I just typed it out and then went to the tutorial and actually said, oh, look at that, it, it's, uh, it's what they had. So um, what I will do next with this, now that I have uh, no errors, I have a screen over here that's working and I have a emulated phone that is doing what I want. This is the point where I can build my application and uh, transport it elsewhere. Uh, I just go to build. Um, I don't know all the rules yet, but I chose uh, generate a signed APK that worked for me. Um, I have to create a key, so I've already created this key. I, I've, um, I'm going straight to a USB stick instead of my hard drive. Um, probably not recommended, but that's what I'm doing for this demo. Uh, just click next and I'm going to choose a release rather than a debug so I'm going right for the release going for the gusto here and I will just hit uh, finish that will do the same thing that it did it's going to recompile this whole program uh, same as it did for the uh, emulated phone and in short order I will have a uh, APK generated I will just show that there in um, Explorer. Uh, I suppose I could change the name. I'm just going to leave it um, APP release for right now, like I did uh, prior to this today. Um, this is now on my USB stick. I can remove this from my computer and take it to my Pine 64 and see if I can install and run it. And that'll be next. My Pine 64 is still in my kitchen in pieces. Uh, I have not yet received the Playbox uh, case for it. So I also have a USB hub on it so I don't spark the board trying to put this in. And I'm also running an external keyboard and mouse for right now uh, just so I don't move the screen around too much. So let me put this in. And it will immediately uh, notice I have a USB hub, I mean USB stick. I will click on that and this is my uh, application release file that you saw earlier. I just click on that and it asks me if I want to install. I shall. And Google wants something which I don't know about right now. My application is installed. I shall open it. And now this is exactly how it looked on my emulator. So I have a green button turns green, blue button turns blue, and that is my first successful uh, application even though I copied all of it from a uh, YouTube tutorial hopefully I will have uh, something that I'm actually was planning to make um, I realize now how difficult that's going to be uh, not impossible but uh, whatever the next step down from impossible is so uh, probably won't see a video from me for quite a while but uh, it, it should be fun and challenging and uh, like I said I I started with something like this in my 20s and made a career out of it. So hopefully uh, you will see the benefits of doing the same if you're just starting out in computing. 
So that's all I have for now. Thank you.